How do you do? My name is Michael Anthony. I've been reading a favorite book of mine. This particular edition, a very rare and valuable one, was given to me by my late employer, John Beresford Tipton. As you may recall, Mr. Tipton was a most unusual man. He gave away $1 million tax-free to various people as a hobby. Actually, it was more than a hobby. It was a practical demonstration of his faith in human nature. Many times during my years as his executive secretary, I heard Mr. Tipton say of this book that it held the solution to every human problem. You know it well. The Holy Bible. Here at Silverstone, his 60,000 acre estate, John Beresford Tipton directed his worldwide interests. These interests were not always gigantic as we accept the word. Sometimes they actually appeared to be minute. You said for me, sir. Mike, do you ever see one of these? Why, it seems to be a plastic disc. I was referring to what's inside of it. It looks like ordinary mustard seed, sir. It is a mustard seed, Mike, but its significance is far from ordinary. In this book, a man named Matthew reported his teacher as saying, if he had faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Yes, sir, I know the quotation well. We all should, Mike, but too often we forget. It's like having a signed cashier's check in our hands and forgetting to cash it. Speaking of checks, here's one for our next millionaire. This is where I met the man to whom Mr. Tipton sent me, an unpretentious house of God in a small midwestern town of Lanesville. The Reverend John Hardin practiced what he preached, tolerance, faith, and the golden rule. Sure. And no candy. That's plenty sweet. Candy? I haven't even got my lunch. 
Have you any idea how expensive laboratory equipment is? Why, there must be easily fifteen, twenty thousand dollars worth here now. And your father paid every penny of it. Well, one thing you can be sure of, he's not spending money that doesn't belong to him. Well, I'm not implying that, but he may be sending himself for the church for me. Dear, he's just trying to help us. The sooner you find that vaccine, the sooner we can get married. So, let's get to work. I want you to use your 
your vaccine on Kathy. I can't do that. You've got to, Ted. It's passed every test possible, except final federal approval. There's no way of telling how effective it is until it's been carefully tested and checked and rechecked. It worked in your laboratory, didn't it? Yes, but on experimental animals, not humans. Can it do any harm? I don't think so. Then why not believe in the good it can do? Do something, please. The day Jimmy died, you asked me if my faith would be strong if it were Kathy lying there. I said it would. Well, she's lying there now. I'm appealing to you. Have as much faith in yourself as we both have. But you don't understand. I just can't. You must. You must have faith in it. It'll save her life. It's Kathy's life we're talking about, Ted. All right. I'll prepare an injection. Certainly wasn't a vaccine. 
Don't understand it. That's because you're being a skeptic again. Listen, Ted. You're on the threshold of discovery. You can try again with a new research method. Kathy's faith was stronger than her sickness. She was cured. Not a scientific principle, but it's worked for 2,000 years. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and he will direct thy path. Nothing shall be impossible unto him. 